Gehenna, a word that conjures images of a place of eternal torment that specifically prepared for sinners in the afterlife. Excruciating pain, gnashing of the teeth, and unending wails of the souls of the wicked fill the air as the devil and his legion of demons take turns to torment all those who rejected Jesus Christ in this world. But is this really true? What does the Christian Bible say about Gehenna? I want to talk about a very serious subject today. And that is that unbelievers will die in the lake of fire. No one talks about Gehenna or hell in the New Testament more than Jesus himself. Let me tell you something. Heaven is real. And since heaven is real, hell is real. The word Gehenna is a Greek transliteration from the Hebrew Valley of Hinnom or Gehinnom. This was a deep gorge located to the southwest of Jerusalem and was also known as the Valley of Tophet. The Valley of Tophet has a repugnant history. This was a place of idolatry, injustice, and spiritual infidelity. According to the Christian Bible, in the second book of Kings, chapter 16, 21, and 23, this was a place where child sacrifices were offered to Molech during the days of Ahaz and Manasseh. In the book of Isaiah, chapters 30 and 37, there is a story of 185 Assyrian soldiers who died during a siege in the days of King Hezekiah. When the soldiers died, their bodies were piled in the valley of Hinnom and set on fire. The Jewish prophet Jeremiah built on this history and told the Israelites that if they did not turn and follow God, something similar would happen to them. And his warning indeed came to pass. In the years 69 to 70 AD, the Romans invaded Israel, slaughtering the people and burning their bodies. The same fate that befell the Assyrian soldiers in the days of King Hezekiah came to the Israelites as the prophet had warned. But it was not just the history of prophecies of this valley that made it a place of horror. In the days of Jesus Christ, the valley was used as a dumping place for the city. Gehenna was not only filled with garbage, refuse and sewage, but also with dead bodies that people were trying to dispose of due to crime, sickness, poverty, or even shame. Occasionally, city officials sought to get rid of the garbage and also cover the stains by igniting the refuse on fire. But there was so much garbage and more was added every day. Therefore, the fire never really died. It burned day and night, seemingly forever and ever. Even in places where there was no open flame, the piles of refuse will still smolder for weeks on end, sending constant billows of smoke and ashes into the air. Despite all this, everything in Gehenna burned. Like it's the nature of flames, they go where they will, and sometimes they leave entire sections untouched. In these areas spared by the flames, worms and maggots went to work on the refuse and corpses that were left behind. Furthermore, as in the nature of all city dumps throughout the world, and even to this day, 
The sick and poor often scavenge through the garbage looking for things to eat or sell. Some of these human scavengers were definitely lepers in various states of disease and decay who might have lived in the rock tombs on the lower end of the valley. Now, with all this in mind, imagine what it would be like taking out garbage on a typical morning in Jerusalem. As you haul your cart of trash down the hill into the valley, you can't help but notice the distinct smoke rising continually from the dump. The smoke is acrid and oily from the burning trash and this makes your eyes teary. But soon, not even the smoke can cover the stench that rises from rotting food and corpses on a hot Middle Eastern day. The smell is so bad, you struggle not to vomit. But the smoke in your eyes and the smell in your nostrils are not the worst of it. As you descend down into the pit, it becomes harder to see. The sun turns blood red due to the smoke and there is a constant gloomy haze that surrounds you. But this is a blessing in disguise, for what you do see is difficult to forget. On your left there is a mangled corpse. It is missing some limbs and is half burned from the fire. The remaining half is crawling with maggots and buzzing with flies. You avert your eyes, only to see a ragged leper stumbling through the smoke while eating a moldy piece of fruit he has pulled from the trash. He is missing his nose and an arm, and he appears to be a walking corpse. Horrified, you decide you have traveled far enough into the pit. You dump your trash as quickly as possible before retreating back up the slope towards Jerusalem. As the smoke recedes and the sun brightens above you, you peer back over your shoulder at where you left your trash, only to see half a dozen walking corpses shuffling towards your pile of garbage as fast as their mangled feet will carry them. They are eager to be among the first to dig through what you have left behind, hoping to find a bit of food or clothing that will get them through another day. You shudder and pick up your pace to leave the nightmare valley behind and return to the land of the living. In the days of Jesus, this is what came to mind when someone used the word Gehenna. The term conveyed a sense of total horror and disgust. Gehenna was a place of undying worm and irresistible fire an abhorrent place where crawling maggots and smoldering heat rest each other to consume the petrifying fire served them each day. Therefore, since Gehenna was a literal place outside the walls of Jerusalem, the word should not be translated in the Christian Bible. The word Jerusalem means city of peace, and the word Bethel means city of God. But in the Bible, these cities are not translated to their English meanings. Instead, they are named as they are, just cities. In the same respect, the word Gehenna should not be translated as hell or any other word since it was a literal place outside the walls of Jerusalem. If there was to be any translation, the only one that would be acceptable would be the Valley of Hinnom, which refers to a literal place outside the gates of Jerusalem. However, even if Gehenna is not translated, meaning that we leave it to be simply the literal valley of Gehenna, there is still a dilemma. Did Jesus have something more in mind than the physical and literal valley of Hinnom when he taught about Gehenna? In other words, when Jesus spoke about Gehenna, was he only speaking about the valley of Hinnom, or was he using the imagery, history, and inherent horror of this valley to teach his listeners about the experience of some people in the afterlife?
when we look at various texts in the New Testament Christian Bible, the answer becomes obvious. Jesus and James, who is the only other person in the New Testament to speak about Gehenna, is indeed using the value of Hinnom in a symbolic way. However, the way he uses the word is not to teach about what will happen to people in the afterlife, but what can happen to people in this life. People who are sent to the Valley of Hinnom, usually because of crime or leprosy, lose their friends and family. They also face a life filled with horror, decay, and destruction. The warnings about Gehenna are given by Jesus so that we do not destroy our health, life, family, friendships, and reputation in this life. God does not want us to live in the valley of death, but to instead enjoy everything that he has given us. In his book, Surprised by Hope, N.T. Wright says this about Gehenna. When Jesus was warning his hearers about Gehenna, he was not, as a general rule, telling them that unless they repented in this life, they would burn in the next one. As with God's kingdom, so with its opposite, it is on earth that things matter, not somewhere else. His message to his contemporaries was stark, and as we will say today, political. Unless they turned back from their hopeless and rebellious dreams of establishing God's kingdom in their own terms, not least through armed revolt against Rome, then the Roman juggernaut will do what large greedy and ruthless empires have always done to smaller countries, not least in the Middle East, whose resources they covet or whose strategic location they are anxious to guard. Rome will turn Jerusalem into a hideous, stinking extension of its own smoldering rubbish heap. When Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish, that is the primary meaning he had in mind. Therefore, while Gehenna is commonly translated as hell in the New Testament, it does not in fact refer to a place of burning torture torment in the afterlife. Instead, the word Gehenna refers to a literal place outside the walls of Jerusalem. Jesus uses the history and imagery of this place to warn his disciples about what can befall them in this life if they do not follow his teachings and take steps, sometimes drastic ones, to protect themselves and their loved ones from the devastation of sin. When Jesus speaks about Gehenna, he is not warning about hell in the next life, but a hellish existence in this life. And don't you sometimes feel that hell is right here on earth? I'm talking about hell, or whatever it may be. It is not an eternal garbage dump where God sends some humans to rot and burn for eternity. The word Gehenna in the Bible teaches nothing of the sort. It was a literal valley outside of Jerusalem that symbolized the death and destruction that came into people's life now if they refused to follow the ways and teachings of Jesus. The symbol of Gehenna tells us nothing about the afterlife. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to be the first one to know when we upload new episodes. Exciting things are coming on this channel and you definitely don't want to miss. Until next time, let your light shine on the world.